Yo yo, welcome to lesson 47. Today we're going to learn how to fetch data using an effect in React. And at the end of this lesson, you're going to get something that looks like this. So let's get started. If you remember from the previous lesson, we created this card component, which keeps track of the number of likes that this card has. And we basically use useState and we set the initial state to zero. So basically, we had to import this directly from React. And this is known as a React hook, which basically allows you to use state and other React features without writing a class. And as you can see, all we did was we created a function that returns some HTML code, which is known as a component. Now, if we want to fetch data, we can use the use effect function, which is mainly used for data fetching and changing the DOM and etc. This is also known as a side effect. And in a nutshell, a side effect is basically changing some state variable outside its local environment. So in this case, when we use use effect, we'll be fetching some data. And once the data comes back, we'll be updating the state variable, which keeps track of the data that we want to display to the user. And this is known as a programming paradigm known as imperative programming. But we're not going to talk too much about it because it is out of scope for this lesson. But feel free to do your own research. So now to fetch data in React, all we have to do is import use effect. So do use effect here. And now let's scroll down. And here we have the function app, which contains everything for our Pokédex app. So now type use effect and open the parenthesis. And now do the shorthand function. So open the parenthesis and then use the equal sign arrow and then open the squiggle brackets and hit enter. And now inside here, we can do our data fetch. So type fetch and open the parenthesis. And now we add the API URL that we want to fetch from. And if you remember from the other lesson, we basically use Poke API slash API v2 Pokemon to get a list of Pokemon data. So now let's copy this URL and now let's go back to our code and now open the quotation marks and paste the link. So after the fetch, we want to chain a dot then statement. And now we open the parenthesis and here we put response and then we use the arrow sign and then we open this cocoa bracket. And now we want to do return response.json so that we can convert the response to JSON data. Next, we add another dot then statement. And for the parameter, we'll just put JSON. And now we add the arrow key and open the squiggle brackets. And now let's just do console.log JSON just so I can show you what the JSON looks like. And now let's add the semicolon and hit save. Now go to your terminal and type npm start to start your development server. Once everything's ready, it will open your browser to localhost 3000. Now right click the page and go to inspect. Now go to console and in the console, you'll see this object. So let's expand it. And here, as you can see, we see this results. And in here, we got a list of 20 Pokemons. Cool. So now let's create a state variable to keep track of this Pokemon data. So hit enter and add a square bracket and let's call this Pokemon list and add a comma. And now type set Pokemon list. And now let's do equals and now let's use use state. And inside here, let's put a empty list. So at the beginning of the app, we're going to have no Pokemons at all. And after this fetch, we're going to populate the Pokemons that we got back from the JSON. So now inside this then statement, let's remove the console.log. And now let's use the set Pokemon list function so that we can update our state variable with the Pokemons that we got back. So now let's open the parenthesis and let's do JSON and open the square brackets so that we can get the value for the results. And now let's close this and now let's hit enter here and let's save this code. And now let's add a console.log before the return and let's log the Pokemon list. And now let's add the semicolon and hit save. And now let's go back to our browser. And it looks like we got an error here saying Pokemon list is not defined. So let's go back to our code. And on line 67, I forgot to put const. So let's add that in and now let's hit save again. And now let's go back to the browser and hit inspect and go back to the console. And as you can see, we got a huge list of console.log statements, and this is not good at all. Let's go back to our code. And basically what's happening is use effect is getting called each time our app component is getting re-rendered. And based on this log statement, we can see that it's getting re-rendered a lot. And to fix this, go to line 77 and add a comma after the squiggle bracket and then hit space and add an empty list. And this basically tells use effect to only run this effect once. And now refresh our app and let's go back to the console. And as you can see, it's much cleaner now. But one thing to know is we have some duplicates. We have this array 20, array 20, array 0, and array 0. So if you go back to the code, and if you go to index.js, we're running react.strict mode, which means that we're in a development environment, which means that React will intentionally double invoke our hooks. So let's comment out line 9 and 9.11. 
and hit save. And now let's go back to our browser. And here, as you can see, we only got one empty list and one list with 20 items. So basically, strict mode is just for development purposes and it helps us with testing. So let's uncomment these lines back. And now let's go back to our code. So now we know that this Pokemon list will contain the list of Pokemons. So now let's update our code to display these Pokemons. So let's get rid of line 79 and let's scroll down. And now let's get rid of this header. And now let's get rid of these paragraphs. And all we really care about are these card components. And as you can see, we just copy and pasted these cards. But with React, we don't need to copy and paste anymore. Instead, we can just write a loop to create these cards. So let's go to line 82 and hit enter. And all we have to do is open the squiggle brackets so that we can write some JavaScript code. And now let's type Pokemon list dot map, which basically allows us to transform each item within the Pokemon list into another item. So in this case, we just want to turn it into a card component. So now let's open the parentheses and for the parameter, we can put Pokemon and let's put the arrow function and open the squiggle brackets and hit enter. And now we can type return and now let's copy this card and erase it and put it inside the return. And now let's get rid of the other two cards. And now inside this card, let's use an actual title. So let's get rid of this and let's do Pokemon and let's put name. And now let's update the image source. And since we've done this already, I'm just going to copy the code over from lesson 42. So I copied over the image source, which calls the function get ID from Pokemon, which takes a Pokemon object and gets the ID for it. And now let's go back to the page and voila, this looks super cool, but it's kind of crowded. So let's go back to our code and fix this. So let's go to the card component and here we're using a column class. So if you remember from a previous lesson, I talked about responsive web designs and with bootstrap, we can add a dash four, which basically means that each card will take up one third of the page. So let's hit save and let's go back to the page. So it looks like we got four Pokemons on each row, which doesn't look correct. So let's go back to our code. So basically we have this style class, which basically sets the width to 18 REM. So we need to get rid of this line because we don't want to fix width for each card. Rather, we want the cards to resize itself based on the size of the window. So now let's hit save and let's go back to the browser and boom, here you go. We got three Pokemons and we can hit like and now we can scroll down and this looks amazing. Awesome. Hopefully you learned something new. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how to add pagination. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next lesson.